Hey, this is Pastor Hannah, and yep, you've tuned in to my YouTube channel, and I'm excited about this month. This month's series is entitled Triggers. What are the things that trigger you? Is it anger? Are you offended? Whatever it is, we want to dig into that. You know what the Bible says? It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. And I refuse to allow my triggers to destroy my kingdom. Let's go. So I want you to hear me. I really do want to live my best life. I really do. And I don't know about you, but how many of you all want to live your best life? I don't want to walk around bound. I don't want to walk around in guilt or shame. I don't want to be uncomfortable bumping into people. I don't want to be in tight environments. I don't want to be in a building where everybody's on edge. And your generation have a new word. I, I felt their energy. That's you all's word. You all say energy. We say spirit. We say your spirit is off. And I don't know about you, but I cannot afford to be in tight, off environments around off people. And if there's anything in me that is causing that, then God, get it out of me. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be a hindrance to anyone else. I don't want to be your burden. I don't want to be your problem. You have to understand me. So we dealt with this to deal with triggers. Why? Because there's certain things that the Lord is saying to us, fix this now before you go into 2023. Certain issues that you had in 22 cannot and will not be your issue in 2023. Why? Because I'm confronting them now. I'm dealing with my Goliath now. You ready? The first week we talked about deal with anger. Some of y'all, you have anger issues. It just take a little thing to make you mad. Come on here. You're too old for to let somebody make you sweat like this, make you sit up at night. We had you to deal with unforgiveness. I need to release you. I need, to, I need to free you up. What you intended for evil, God turned that thing around, and he being glorified. I want to thank you for firing me. I want to thank you for quitting me. I want to thank you for walking out on me. Because had you not did what you did, then I wouldn't be who I am and wouldn't be going where I'm going. Everybody that's ever been... I'm trying to figure the word out. Yeah, yeah, they quit you. Anybody they ever quit, they ever quit you. Can you just clap your hands and... Can you thank God that you didn't marry them? <laughs> Some of y'all married them. Can you thank God they left? <laughs> we dealt with the trigger of entitlement. What does that mean? You can free yourself by saying, no one owes me anything. What you mean? I might have expected to you to give me something, but if you didn't give it to me, I'm good. Why? Because every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And then last week, we dealt with comparison. Listen to me. I'm too busy focusing on my own lane that I don't have time to worry about what you're doing. Come on here. I don't have time to be like Cain because I don't want sin crouching at my door. As a matter of fact, if I see God blessing you, I want to praise God for your elevation. Why? Because the Bible says we rejoice with those that rejoice. And I don't want to set my life back by hating on you. So if you got a new car, thank you, Jesus. If you got a new job, thank you, Jesus. You single and they get married, thank you, Jesus. Come on here. You got a promotion, thank you, Jesus. Why are you thanking them? Because the next time we go out, you paying for everything. Thank you. So let's talk. Let's talk. There's a scripture that says, it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. It's the little things that turn into big things. And I don't know about you, but if it's anything that's small that could burn up everything, help me to find it. Today we want to deal with um, the trigger of offense when somebody did something said something that messed you up and be honest with yourself you are offended now let's let's define the word offended if you look at the screen it says resentful annoyed 
typically as a result, here's the line that messed me up, of a perceived insult. In other words, I perceive, one of the worst ways of communicating when you're upset is through texting. Because when I read your text, I'm going to read it in the spirit that I'm in. Like you could have just texted me, how you doing? That ain't how I read it. Well, how you doing? It is a perceived insult. And sometimes, I dealt with this in my devotion last night, when some disciples left Jesus. Why did they leave? Because of received insult. They didn't communicate, you got to hear me, they didn't understand, and they did not value who he was. Allow me to show you five signs of someone who is easily offended. When you read this, it's hard for us, for anybody to say, this is me. Normally when we read things like this, we find somebody to pin this on. But what if we need to pin it on you? For example, number one, signs that someone is easily offended, you complain more than often. You always got to complain. I mean, this church is nice, but why is it so dark up in here? Why do they have smoke coming all out the side? <laughs> Shut up. Listen, number two, you always the victim. You never do anyone wrong. They always do you wrong. Number three, it's hard to admit that you do suffer with insecurities. Somebody has to always validate you, applaud you. How come you just can't do you and not worry about a, anybody applauding you? Because when you're insecure, you always got to, listen, it's hard to keep running up behind you being your cheerleader. Just do you, boo. What's this fourth word? Nasa who? And what does that mean? It always about you. You're self-centered. The next one is you just want attention. You got to hear me. It's hard to read that and say, that is me. And the easiest thing to say is to point that to somebody else. To, point, to put that on somebody else. Hear me clearly. And deliverance cannot come on a lie. You got to hear me. Today, we're going to deal with somebody who was close to Jesus. We're not talking about somebody who's far away. We're not talking about somebody who's on 79th Street. We're talking about somebody who's in the building. And they have a spirit of offense. Out of Jesus had 12 disciples that stayed close. He handpicked every last one of them. He gave them power. They traveled with him. He washed their feet. He fed them. And this one, he trusted with the finances, which means you have a position. You have a position, you close. We always going to look to you. But then something happens that you become offended. I had them to build this up because this is basically your circle. You are in your circle. You're literally in your circle. And Jesus had the 12 disciples in the circle. Everybody look at me. You have a village. You have a community. You have people that are around you. You have friends that are around you. This is your family. These are people on your job. This is your church. These are the ones that you serve with. These are the ones that you laugh with. These are the ones that you grew up with. These are the ones that know you better than anybody else. These are the ones that some of them know your deepest secrets. This is your circle. And some of y'all, you need to hear me, God has put you in a village, in a circle. He literally called you out of darkness, put you in the light, and began to connect you with different people. That's the come I tell you, introduce yourself to those that are around you. Why? Because that is part of your circle. Why? Because, watch me, when somebody is weak, somebody else is going to be strong. When you don't feel like praying, hopefully you got a prayer warrior next to you. When you don't feel like lifting your hands, they'll look at you and say, I got you today. You got to get around some people. Who going to put a demand on you? Who going to prophesy over you? Who going to speak over you? Who going to believe over you? Come on here. I need you to put a demand on everybody in your section and tell them our latter days are going to be greater. Come on, tell your circle. Hey, hey, hey. 23 is going to be better than 22. Come on, tell them. Come on. Come on, y'all. Begin to speak this. Begin to speak this. Don't lie in your circle. I, come on here. Anybody bound in my circle, you're going to get delivered. Anybody sick, you're going to get healed. Anybody broke, you're about to be favored. And he's with his 12. 
He's with his 12. And now we're going to deal with Judas. A woman comes into the circle and she does something that nobody else has done in the circle. And this is why I tell people, you got to be careful because you've been in the circle that you're not offended when new people step in that do what you don't do. Come on. She comes in and she opens up her jar. Bring it up. But she says, and then Mary took out about a pint of pure nard, expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. That line right there blessed me so much because one person can fill the whole house. One worship can free everybody up in here. Come on here. And she filled the house to the point that she could not be ignored. Please listen to me. When you fill the house, everybody got an opinion about what you're doing. They'll never do what you're doing, but they always have to, something to say about what you're doing. Come on here. Let's read the Bible. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Ain't this a mess? Come on, let's read the book. Come on. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? Put a pen right there. How are you going to tell somebody else what to do with their stuff and you ain't got nothing? Come on here. Come on here. It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of the money bag, and he would dip his hands in the bag and help himself to what was put in it. Please watch while Judas is doing all this talking. Please pay attention. The woman does not stop pouring. She keep doing her. Judas got something to say. Please listen to me. Jesus, Jesus dealt with her hater. I need to tell some of y'all, you just keep pouring and let Jesus deal with your hater. You keep doing you and don't try to defend or explain your worship. Some of y'all have stopped pouring because you let Judas shut you down. Shh, keep pouring. Watch Jesus, Bible. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day, for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Please watch me. Judas never opened his mouth again. As a matter of fact, if you search the scriptures, you don't read what Judas said too much of anything. But when Jesus said, leave her alone, there was something in him that stood up in him. How you going to talk to me like that in front of everybody else? How you going to disrespect me in front of... First of all, what is it about you that head can't tell tale nothing? What is it about you that those in authority can't tell you what to do or how to do anything? So he gets a Offended, and he does not open his mouth. Most people that get offended, you never let somebody know what they did. Bible even said, come now, let us reason together. In all that getting, get an understanding. Watch me. And then we could tell that something has switched in you, but you never communicated. You never communicated. You never told somebody that they crossed you. You never told somebody what they did that make you change. So Judas is now silent. Who's waiting on you to speak? And you ain't said nothing yet. But we can tell you ain't right. You come in, sit down. How you doing? I'm fine. What up? Nothing. <laughs> Please do me a favor. Because offense is thick in the land. Reach over, just touch somebody on your radio and say, I come against the spirit of offense. <laughs> come on, say it again. Say, I come against the spirit of offense. 
Now, I want to show you this line. Can you bring this line up? Can you bring this line up? When it says, it's possible that Judas, it's possible that Judas is offended. Why? Because even though Jesus did not denounce him as a thief, the rebuke drew attention to his greed. So watch me. He never told everybody that you're a thief, but because he said something, I'm really trying to get you to examine yourself and, and, and watch me and deal with the residue that is in your life. I put you over the money knowing that you was a thief, thinking that if you keep walking with me, you just might get delivered. <laughs> And Judas don't say nothing. He does not open his mouth and say one thing. And then his mind gets to running. When you don't talk, the enemy gets to talking. And he starts building up all kind of accusations in your head. Y'all ain't going to be honest. Come on, lean in with me. Just one minute. Come on, lean in. Look at me. Look at me. Isn't it amazing how when the enemy talking to you, you always hear you saying something, but never let them respond. Isn't it amazing how you always win in your mind? Ooh, we. So next he come in, he comes in to seduce. Watch, watch me. So he keeps walking with Jesus while offended. He keeps walking with Jesus while offended. He keeps serving while offended. He keeps doing him while offended. You keep shouting while offended. You keep speaking in tongues while offended. You keep going to church while offended. You keep sleeping with him, but you're still offended. You still befriended him, but you're still offended. Ready? They get to the table. Jesus said, listen, one of y'all going to betray me. And they say, who is it? 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 Who is, it? is it I? Is it I? Judas ain't say nothing. We could tell by your posture something ain't right with you. And we keep trying to do things to get you to change. He done washed his feet, and he still ain't right. He done fed this mark, and he's still not right. Finally, he gets say, you know what? He that dippeth his hand in the bowl with me is the one that's going to portray me. And Jesus was a G. This messed me up. I ain't going to talk about you behind your back. I'm going to deal with you in front of your face. Please watch me. Then the Bible says, as soon as Judas took the bread, please pick a tissue in it. He's not that offended that he, will not, that he won't take that bread. There's some people that are mad at you, but they still gonna take everything that you offer. Y'all gonna say they still gonna ride in your car, they still gonna live in your house, they still gonna let you buy them something to eat. Come on, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. Here's the one line that messed me up every time I read it. Satan entered into him. Why? Since you're not saying nothing, Satan is now going to come in and he's going to seduce you and he's going to get in you because you left the door open. You didn't speak up. You didn't say nothing. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do all the talking for you. I'm going to make you think some of the craziest stuff. I'm going to get you so out of character because I have entered in. Please watch this. So Jesus, so, so Jesus told him, whatever you're going to do, now that you got that spirit on you, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. So now you're going to watch me. You're not going to listen to me anymore. You're only going to listen to what has gotten in you. You're not going to listen to me anymore. You're only going to watch me. And why would you trust that thing that got inside of you? Why? Because he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Come on here. So watch me. When he gets in you, watch. Now I want you to pay attention. Who is he? Bring this next scripture up. Bring this next scripture up. In John 8 and 44, he was a murderer. Why are you listen to a murderer? Why are you listen to a hater? From the beginning, he ain't never been right. Watch me. And does not stand in truth. Watch me. And there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him. Please listen. And why, why are you trusting him? That's not you. That is not you. Please listen. He is a liar. He's the 
father of lies. Here it is, and have truth. What's what what's mean? He'll give you a little truth and then add some lies to it. I know they love me, but I know they trust me, but I know they believe in me, but and you keep listening to something that has gotten inside of you. They don't like me. They don't love me. They don't believe in me. And the more you listen, the more you listen, the more you listen. Oh, we, the more you listen, okay, the more you listen, he starts unrattling. The more you listen, you start losing your village. The more you listen, it's about to be a separation. But the more you listen, you start getting away from people who you used to be close to. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say that to me now. Now you all at the club. You dropping it, and you're behind us too old to pick it back up. Listen, come on here. Now you drinking, now you smoking, now you all out of character. Why? Because you have allowed a separation. And how did it get this bad? You ask me, why would you listen to a liar? Why would you listen to somebody who hates unity? Why would you listen to somebody who got kicked out of heaven? Why would you listen to somebody that every time you lift your hands and open your mouth and worship him, you remind him of who he used to be? Every time you open your mouth and you shout to God, you irritate the devil. Can I tell you something? You want to know why he targeted you? Because your praise is too much. You want to know why he targeted you? Because every time you get out the bed, you're like, thank you, Jesus. You want to know why he targeted you? Because every time you start the car, you be like, glory to God. You want to know why he targeted you? Because every time you open the door, you say, didn't nobody do this but God. You want to know why he targeted you? Because there's some demons sitting around you. And every time you release a praise, you make hell upset. Ah! I need you to make sure you got another praise next to you. Look at somebody and just say, glory! Ah! So now where you at? You got to hear me. You have to hear me. Bible. Ready? You got to watch Bible. Jesus didn't say, go ahead. Go ahead and do what you got to do. And Bible. Bring this up. And as soon as Jesus, Judas, had taken the bread, he went out. Please pay attention to when he left. Because some of y'all, you looking for them, but they left during the night. They were not bold enough to tell you in your face. They were not mature enough to tell you what's going on. So they slipped out of your life at night. They came through the front door, but they snuck out the back door. And so now there's a separation. So now there's a distance. And you got to hear me. How did you get out here by yourself? What happened to your circle? Where are your friends at? What happened to your family? Hey, now why are you not in church again? Now tell me why you're not on the praise team. Because they didn't let you lead? Oh. So the only reason you got on there was to lead? You didn't get on there for his glory. So now tell me, now tell me, now t- you left because they wouldn't let you preach. Oh, so a microphone would have made you stay? You offended because somebody corrected you? As if you perfect? So question, so if Jesus can't check you, let me go over here. If Jesus can't check you, who can? Can I tell you a real friend? A real friend can call you on your stuff. A real friend, watch me, and not hold it against you. A real friend will check you and then take you out to eat. Y'all ain't got no real friends. Y'all got conditional friends. You got con- 
and he leaves. Now, why did you leave? Now, explain to me again, because I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. Now, tell me again, why did y'all stop talking? Tell me again now. now t- I, need, I'm, 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 I need to hear this real good. Watch me. And some of y'all, watch me, if you explain it, if you start explaining, so this is why I love, and you start listening to why you left, you're going to hear the devil. They came in and you got seduced. So here's my line. After he separates you, hear me. Now this is key. So who are you connected to now? I got a question for you. So you're not, it's not, no, I don't deal with a lot of people. See, that circuit was too big. <laughs> and I try to get you to extend your circle by making you introduce yourself to people. Come on, pray for them. Touch your neighbor. I don't like touching. I don't like talking either. I just want to come to church and get a word. But what if my deliverance is locked up in your throat? What if when you speak, healing is supposed to take place? What if, what if, what if when you say something to me, heaven going to listen to me? And that, watch me. And if you don't say something, now I got to hit you to make you say something. And I need you to, I, listen, I just want to stop right here to make sure that you're connected to the right one. Touch your name and say, hey, hey, hey. I decree and I declare again that your 2023 is going to be better than your 22. And every demonic force that tried to shut you down. Ready? Those of you that believe what they just told you, lift your hands and begin to worship God for five seconds. Five, four. Get on those, I uh... You ready? I feel the anointing real good right now. I just, I just need to release some words over some people. Can you touch your name and say, God's about to close every gap. Hit up shot. God's about to close every gate. God's about to close every door. Every way that the enemy tried to kill you. God is about to. Come on, y'all. I need to use you. God's about to address your guilt, your shame, your condemnation. The devil is a liar. So. Yeah, I got you today. I, I got you today. I got you today. I got you today. Anybody glad he's checking you? Anybody glad that he's still God? He could get out everything. If you find anything, take it away. Ready? Ready? So what he does is, he shuts your village down, and then he connects you, connects you, and you got to be careful here, because people that want this kind of connection don't want you with a village. Because if you get with a village, these are the kind of people that want to control you, want to manipulate you. These are the people that see that you're offended and they literally take advantage of you being offended and they begin to offer you opportunities that don't go with your purpose or your destiny. They, watch me. They're basically a donut when you should have a new tire. So they give you a... <laughs> Come on. So you, you, you start connecting. You start connecting with some people who can see your offense. You start connecting with some people who can see that you're kind of hurt, that you're kind of, but you didn't communicate your hurt. 
You didn't, you didn't tell anybody that you felt the way that you felt because you, you, know, you let the devil seduce you and you let him talk. So, watch it. so now you, you connected to some people and this is now your surrounding. So who are these people? Where they come from? When did they show up? Because you didn't know them when you was in the village. <laughs> Let me go down here. How did, did they sense you were bleeding? Could they smell blood? Because sharks can smell blood. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Sharks can smell blood. And watch me. And the enemy waits on you to get by yourself so he could put predators around you. All right? You got to get this ready. You got to get this ready. So I love watching like the, the, the animal channel, the nature channel. And if you ever see animals, when they're moving to one location, they stay close together. When the lions come and the tigers come, what they do is they send a roar. And watch me. And the scaredest one will break out from the group. And when they get you by yourself, because now you have nothing to protect you. And some of y'all, what you got to hear me, the enemy has released a roar because he's like a roaring lion. But what you don't understand, a roaring lion has very little teeth. So his roar is bigger than his bite. <laughs> you ready? So now, now you connected with some people. Now you got to watch the exchange. You got to watch the exchange. You ready? And Judas went to the chief priest. You were not hanging out with no chiefs when you was with Jesus. So why are you going to them and the officers of the temple guard and discuss with them how he might give in to the offense? Give in to the offense. Submit to it. You justified. You validated. He talked to you like you was a child. You a grown man. Who he think he talking to? Leave her alone. I didn't tell the woman that had the issue of blood to leave you alone. How you gonna tell me to leave her alone? I didn't say nothing to you when you went over to Jerry's house and didn't take nothing with me. Now I got something to say. Now you gonna try to bust me up. I ain't none of Peter. See, you could look at Peter and tell him, get thee behind me. I, listen, if you bust me out, I'm a grown man, and you ain't going to talk to me any kind of way. So now I am out of character. Woo. Verse number five. And they were delighted. We're so glad to see you. We're so glad to see that you left your village and you come to us. And so now we are your connection and we're going to give you what Jesus wouldn't give you. Because you got offended with Jesus over money, so we're going to offer you money. Just because you got the position don't mean that's God. <laughs> Just because they gave you money don't mean that's God. What's the motive of them doing it? The motive is to get you completely away from your circle. And he consented. He consented. That's my choice. How you gonna walk with Jesus? How you going to be in church this long? How you going to have that kind of position and still hold all this stuff in you? How you going to do that? And just because you got an opportunity, just because you got a little money, then you in here shouting, stop. Because you shouting and planning at the same time. You shouting and hating at the same time. You shouting and, and, and constantly trolling somebody's Instagram page, waiting on them to go down. You hating it. It's all, it's all in your spirit. It's all in your spirit. And every time you see them blessed, you throw the phone. Stop. Those phones cost too much. Listen. I mean, you could throw an Android, but hold on to your iPhone. We don't, we don't throw iPhones. We don't. Androids are like flying saucers. It's, Okay. okay, come back into the word. Come back to the word. And he looked for an opportunity. And he looked for an opportunity. And he looked for an opportunity to make himself look great. And he looked for an opportunity 
to make himself look like he was needed. And he looked for an opportunity to make himself look like he was wanted. And he got it. And he got it. And he turned Jesus in. And then when he turned Jesus in, he has all kind of remorse. He go back to them, to the chief priest, take the money, I don't want it. I feel bad. I, 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 I turned on innocent blood. You know what they told him? <laughs> what they got to do with me? See, when people get done using you, when they finish using you, they're done with you. They are done! So how did you go from a circle to just a rope? From a rope to a noose. How do you, how are you having suicidal thoughts? Why are you so depressed? Who's affecting you or what have you done? What have you consented to that got you here? Come on, lean in. Don't back up now. Come on, lean in. You had bigger plans for your life. This ain't you. This is not you. you. What does he do? You got to get this. The whole point is to get him by himself. When he gets him by himself, I'm going to move on with my life. He go get the money and he go buy a field. I'm just going to start over again. Until you deal with your internal issues. Let's go. How does he end up with the payment he received for his what? For his what? For his what? Okay, I just want to make sure. Judas bought a field, and there he fell headlong. His body burst open, and his intestines spilled out. Question, lean in. Why do we need to know all of that? Why is the Bible telling me that he fell headlong, his body split open? Because the enemy wants to gut you of everything that was poured into you. He wants to make sure that he embarrasses you to the point that all this time that you spent with Jesus and he was pouring in you, let's just spill it all out and let it be known that you were split open and everything that was poured into you, all your money out here, all your degrees out here, all your integrity out here, everything that you worked so hard for, all because you gave in to offense. Are you kidding? And you sitting around here with a noose around your neck. And for some of y'all, the longer you ignore it, it gets tighter. The longer you want to dress it, it gets tighter. And some of y'all like this. You came in here on a breathing machine. Everybody stand to your feet. And if you're looking at that screen and you're struggling with suicide, you see a number on the screen. You know what I hear in the spirit? You crying, you going through, cause you're not around your village. You're going through, cause nobody can pick up that you smiling, but you really are going through hell. Cause your real village can tell something's wrong with you. Everybody close your eyes and just say, yes, Lord, please, please. Please, please say yes, Lord. Come on, say it again, yes, Lord. Come on, say yes, Lord, I'll clean it up. Come on, say yes, Lord, I'll fix it. 
Come on, say, yes, Lord, I'll address it. Ready? You ready? Please look at me. Please look at me. Statistics have shown that the longer we go, the younger they're getting committing suicide. Statistics have shown the longer we go, more men are committing suicide. Statistics have shown, look at me, the longer we go, more African-American men, intestines are being spilled out. How we get here? How we get here? And some of y'all, your connection is the one that bring you substance rather than take you to prayer. Your connection is the one to bring you a drink, bring you some, some, some bud, bring you some weed, bring you some stuff. These are the ones that keep handing you stuff to numb your pain. So why does God have us addressing this on the last Sunday of October? Trick or treat. <laughs> Devil, you just got tricked again. Those of y'all that know that God is up to something major in your life, forget about everybody and lift your hands and open your mouth and release some praise right there. Go, 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 go. I'm not going to die like this. 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 It up. Y'all stop looking. Please watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Because the enemy will try to come in and distract us. Face me. There's a spirit of offense in the land. If you on social media, you keep seeing fights after fight, fight after fight. People get offended by one statement, one comment, one post. It's just fight. It's, it's so violent right now. Everybody's on edge. Look at me. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This thing is spiritual. And you come in the house of God, and the same demonic spirit is sitting up in the house of God. That everybody's sitting on edge, waiting to go off on one another. No, no, no. My house shall be the house of prayer. This shall be a safe space. Oh, can I show you how I know we in the last days? Can I show the other? How we, look at the screen in Matthew 24, 24 and 10, 24 and 10, Matthew 24, Matthew 24. Give me the scripture that Pastor Jamon had. Matthew 24 and 10. Pastor Jamon had it. And then many will be offended. They will betray one another. They will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and validate your offense. Many false prophets will stand up and tell you, ain't nothing wrong with you. Many false prophets will validate your, watch me, here we go, oh God, here we go. They'll validate your offense because all they want is your money. They'll validate your offense because all they want is your gift or your character. Can I tell you something? Your, 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 your soul is more important than your finances. Your... All right, I'm done. Close your eyes. As the deer pants after the water brook, my soul needs you, God. Help me during this broken season in my life. Help me. Help me. Help me. 
I see the enemy closing in then I realize that I need help and sometimes I don't leave it like the way that I look or how I respond if you know that I am talking to you get out of your seat and meet me on the altar move now move now Get out of your seat. Some of y'all are gifted, you saved, you sanctified, you got the Holy Ghost, you got a position, you got a title, but you are walking around with a spirit of offense. Get out of your seat and come now. Get out of your seat. Come now. Get out of your seat and come now. Get out of your seat and come now. Some of y'all are here with the person that you're offended by. Get your family and come to the altar. Let's shut this gate. now hold the music hold the music hold the music look at me your shout won't deliver you from this your dancing your title your position you're gonna have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God had Judas ran back to Jesus and got with Jesus he would have forgiven him. But what he did was he ran off by himself. When Peter messed up, Peter ran right back to Jesus. And what am I trying to tell some of you all? Whatever you've done, his arms are wide open. You have to hear me. You have to hear me. You have to hear me. So with that, we cancel the spirit of guilt, shame, and condemnation. Come on here. Come on here. Whatever you've done, whatever you've done, whatever you've done, you got, come on, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. What's in you, you have to stay connected. I know for a fact, there were times when I was under my pastor, the Woodley, he offended me, but I knew I couldn't go anywhere. I knew that I had to stay there because there was lessons in the offense. I have people, what, you left because what? Because I didn't give you a chance, because I didn't give you what? I didn't give you what you wanted, maybe I saw what you didn't see. And I got to be okay with you being offended because I would rather obey God than give you what you want. But there's somebody I came to get. Because God is about to enlarge your territory. He's about to disconnect you from the people that have been taking advantage of your offense. He's about to set you free from the demonic spirit of witchcraft. <laughs> and even as I'm moving this rope, he's releasing them out of your spirit right now. That the next time they call you, you're going to say no. You're going to say I'm good. As a matter of fact, they're going to call you and quit you. I need those of you that know that God's about to do something miraculous in your life. Come here, come out, praise team. Hey, 
Everyone look. Come on out. You can't go out like this. God's about to make you relational. You're going to have friendships and connect connections for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I have a friend here. Pat, as long, Pat, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Pat. That's my friend, Pat. Pat was in my wedding. Pat has been my, year, my friend over 40 years. Pat walked with me through singlehood, marriage, and we've been connected for years. You all have heard me talk about Pat because when she was in my circle, I was one that was a little shy because I had been verbally abused so much. But when I got around Pat and her cousin Warren, they pulled out the personality that you get to see because you got the right people in your village. You can't be around people that want, that want to abort your call. You got to be around somebody that want to see you become everything that God created you to be. So what God is about to do, praise team, back up just a little bit. As a matter of fact, can y'all step inside? God is about to put you around somebody who got a, some, a familiar prayer life, who got a familiar worship, who, around somebody who you could sing with, somebody that you can pray with. Somebody, can I get a few dancers to come and get up under this rope too? Come on here. What is he doing? He's enlarging in your territory. He's getting people around you that want to see you make it. Come on. I, ain't nobody got time for y'all. Come on here. Watch me. Watch me. And there's certain people that would never come back. And there's certain people that would not be comfortable with what you got new going on in your life. Those of y'all that believe that God is doing a new thing. Lift your hands and open your mouth and worship God. Come on, say, lock me in, God. <laughs> Come on, say, lock me in, God. Okay. So we're going to fix this. I need you to hear me. You got to hear me. Have I ever been offended? I was offended, highly offended. That there were people that walked out on me that I've done so much for. And you know, you, let me tell you why I was so offended. Because I kept saying, if it was me, see, if it was me, they're not you. So I need you to let them be them. That's who they are. You're going to free yourself today. And you're around somebody that want to see you free. Look to your left and your right and say, today is our day. Get ready to sing me a song. Get ready. Come on. Come on. Demand freedom all around you. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on here. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Come on here. Come on, y'all. Get ready. This is, this is, this is going to be your 2023. He's about to send people around you who are going to push you and make sure that you be everything that God has called you to be. He's about to put people in you that's going to take your name and take it where it's supposed to be. He's about to put millionaires around you. Why? Because you're going to be a millionaire. He's about to put business people around you. Why? Because you are going to own your own business. Business. Please make sure you got the right person next to you because I should hear your worship. Lift your hands and open your mouth and open your worship. Open your mouth and worship. Oh, I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. Yeah. It's who I'm meant to be. Oh, I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. No chains. It's who I'm meant to be. Yeah. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. Yeah. Was blind but now. Come on, I need to hear you worship. I'm free indeed. Yes. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. It's who I'm meant to be. 
to be. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. Was blind but now I see. It's only to be. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. Circle around you. Choose to be free. Choose to be free. I choose to be. Choose to be free. I choose to be free. One of the greatest stories that you can read is when Paul and Silas were locked up in jail. The Bible said that they prayed and they worshiped God until the foundation was shaken, the gates were open, and the chains were broken. And I'm believing God that the foundation is about to be shaken, the gates are about to be open, and the chains of offense are about to be broken. I need you to grab a neighbor by the hand and then allow me to pray. Yeah, let's go. Hold the music one minute. So God, here we are. And everything that you see in us that should not be, we ask you to break it up off of us. I pray, God, on the last Sunday of this month that you look deep inside of me. Not if you find, but God, when you find anything in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind that is against anyone, please deliver me out of the hand of the enemy. Break every soul tide. God, get me out of the grip of the enemy. I pray, God, that you allow the spirit of liberty to be in this house. I ask God that we now begin to go back anything that needs to be fixed, that you would give us the wisdom to fix it. We ask God that you go ahead of us and prepare the conversation. We pray God that you would free us up. God, and if they don't forgive us, let us be okay, but not live in guilt, shame, and condemnation. For God, we are ready to be free. Hold that hand because we are about to release a shout in this building. And God, I pray that the same way that you shook the foundation, I pray the same way that you opened every gate, I pray the same way that you broke every chain, I pray that liberty be released in this building. For somebody need to be released from the divorce. Somebody need to be released from the abuse. Somebody need to be released from religion. Somebody need to be released from a friend. Someone needs to be released from disappointment. Someone needs to be released from neglect. Someone needs to be released from a promise that someone did not keep. But living in bondage is not an option. Today is about to be our freedom day. And on the count of three, we're going to release a praise that everything is about to be fixed. Every chain is about to be broken every gate is about to be open and I am about to give you a way of escape and the foundation is about to be shaken on the count of three everybody release the best praise you got I need your praise you need my praise we got to do this thing together the only way that we're going to be free is that we have to do it together one two three go come on y'all get free Get free! We in this scene together. Get the right people around me. Get the wrong people away from me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Come on, y'all. I need you to go after God. Help me, Lord. Help me to be a friend. 
Help me to be a husband. Help me to be a friend. Come on, lady. Help me to be a wife. Help me to be single. Help me to be a good employee. Help me to be a friend. Help me, Lord. It's a new season. It's a new day. Clap your hands and release a praise. Because all things are now ready. I hear that in the spirit now. All things are now ready. Come on, I hear that in the spirit. All things are now ready. You dealt with your anger. You dealt with the unforgiveness. You dealt with the insecurity. You dealt with the entitlement. You dealt with the comparison. You dealt with, you dealt with it. You dealt with it. You didn't run from it. You put it on the altar. Now that it is over. All things are now ready. Release the praise like you got a new season. I need you to release the praise like it's a new season. I need you to release the praise like it is over. No more chains. You got this. My last time, y'all, please obey me. Release the praise. All things are now ready. Your name is about to be brought up. Your phone is about to ring. On your way to your seat, hug three people and tell them all things are now ready. You ready now? You ready now? Y'all want to come outside? Y'all want God to enlarge your territory? You want God to enlarge your territory? No bondage. No boundary. And when the sole of your feet tread, I'll give it to you. Don't nobody leave the building. I'm about to let you out. Look at two people that tell them, you're free now. No more triggers. you free now. No more triggers. You're free now. Everybody that thank God that this series blessed you. I need to hear praise that God dealt with your triggers. On the count of three, if this thing delivered you, it set you free. Can you release the praise that God didn't leave you in bondage? On the count of three, please obey me. Release the best praise you have. One, two, three, go. No more angry days. I'm not mad at nobody. Come on, look at somebody and tell them I'm good now. All things are now ready. what I withhold from you those of you that are in the seat of expectation if you're not waiting on nothing then don't do nothing but if you believe that he's a God and he's going to perfect those things concerning you everything is about to fall in place Release a praise for that right there. Go, go, go. Hey. Now you're going to meet somebody.
and you can marry them. Now you can get your new job. Now you can be everything that God called you to be. Now that every chain is broken, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God has in store for you, all things are now ready. I need to get out of this. You should open your mouth and declare that all things are now ready. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. What the devil intended for evil. God just flipped that thing around. It didn't work. Come on, y'all, give me like 10 seconds of you praising God. Leave the smile on your face. Everybody put a smile on your face. Ah! I need you to get this biggest smile you can find. Your smile is a reflection of the switch that just happened in your life. Go, y'all. 
took a dream. You'll never stay up another night. You'll never cry another tear. You'll never have another down day. You'll never question yourself again. God got you together. the biggest smile on your face. I need you to clap your hands and put the biggest smile on your face. You almost quit. You almost gave up. But God left the 99 to come and get you. Working in ministry, release a praise right there. Everybody that work with people, release a praise right there. Everybody that have to deal with attitudes, release a praise right there. Why is your face?
face downcast. Your face tells me something ain't right with you. Oh, but when you put a smile on your face and open your mouth and begin to bless the Lord, it let heaven know that all things that work together for your good. Lift your hands with a smile on your face. Open your mouth. supposed to have a nervous breakdown you were supposed to take your life you were supposed to walk away from the church you were supposed to get off your square but let the let heaven reflect I'm still here everybody that's still here release a praise right there Everyone stand. of you that know that your steps have been ordered by God and better is the end of a thing than the beginning I need you to release the praise like you made it to the end of your trial go 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 to get some of y'all hold the music because some of y'all you cannot make it without Christ and the church you got to hear me I know we're in a day right now you just got to know God for you. how can they hear without a preacher you got to have somebody who hear from heaven that can speak into your life 
You got to have somebody next to you that could pray with you, that could walk with you, that could disciple you, that could understand you. You need a village around you. You cannot do this thing called life by yourself. Two calls. Number one, that's someone you got to have God first. Okay, what we you can do all this shouting. If you don't accept the Lord, stop. Number two, you got to get in church. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not going to apologize. Has the church disappointed me? Yes. Have I been mad? Yes. But I ain't going nowhere. This is my village. This is my community. This is what made me. Everyone stand to your feet while we do this. I don't want anybody stepping over you. There are about 12 of you in this building. I know you here. And I came to get you today. You cannot live in offense. You cannot live in your past. If you know that I'm talking to you, and there's some strong spirits up in here, because some of y'all, you ain't taking nothing off nobody. That's called pride. You're going to get out of your seat, and you're going to come towards me. When you come, chains will begin to break immediately. Start walking right now. Just stand right here. Start walking right now. Step out of your past and into your future. Come out of your guilt and your shame and come into something called the new life. Get out of your seat and come now. Get out of your seat. Get out of my seat. Get out of your seat. There's more in here. There's more in here. Get out of your seat. Get out of my seat. Hey, stand still for a minute. Stand still for a minute. There's somebody in here. Still mad at the abuser. They going on with their life, but you're still in bondage. And the Lord said he's ready to break that thing up off of you. You'll never forget what they've done, but it won't hold you hostage. Get out of your seat and get up here right now. Randadaba. Randorobose. Get out of your seat. Nedama. You did not deserve it. God is ready to free you from the lie of the enemy. All right. Give me one minute. The Holy Ghost is talking. Your background is really bad. As a matter of fact, there's so much guilt, shame, and condemnation in you. There's a part of you that feel like you'll never be right. But you're the perfect one for God to fix. 
Nobody needs to know what you did, but you know your background. I'll count to 10 to give you a chance to get up, to give God the opportunity to flip your life inside out. But I need you to get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, here they come, 6, here they come, 5, Four, three, it's still coming, it's still coming, you're about to get a clean slate, you're about to get a new season on life. Yes, Lord. Those on the altar, lift your hands, close your eyes and repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am, and I'm a mess, and I need a savior, and I need deliverance. So I come to you, my creator, my maker, my God, my deliverer. I believe that Jesus came to earth, that he died for my sins that he rose from the dead and he is my savior and I confess with my mouth that I need Jesus and that I accept him right now as my risen Lord and savior forgive me of all my mess come on say that forgive me of my sin come into my life and be Lord over my life and by faith say this real strong I am saved. Release a praise like we just emptied out hell. I need y'all to do me a favor. Don't go back to your seats. You're gonna follow this hand right here in front of, right behind you. Follow that gentleman. Everyone else have a seat. I'll have you out in a few minutes. Come on, move quickly, move quickly. Come on, move quickly. Wow. Good. Come on, we're moving quickly. Can I get everyone else? Let's do this real quickly. This is not my fault. Y'all kept shouting. Can I get you to get your tithes and your offering ready? Come on, get your seat ready. Get your seat ready. For those of us that believe in tithing, can you raise your hand? I pray that God continue to let you live in overflow. I pray that he continue to blow your mind because you are a sponsor for kingdom. Now I need everyone else, if you can get an offering in your hand, it could be 25, it could be 50, it could be 100. He give a seed to the sower. And if everyone in the building and online, if you could release a seed right now, and I pray that God would multiply your seed. I pray that everything that you release, he bring it back tenfold. Come on, say tenfold. Come on, get your seed ready. You could text and give you text the words, NLC, S-E to 91694. If you want the scan code, you can look at the scan code on the screen. You can scan that and you can give. You want to write a check, you make it out to NLCSE if you want to give cash. If you look on in the aisle, there's some people walking with envelopes and they'll give you an envelope. We have some hens at the front that need envelopes. And then when you get the envelope on your way out the building to your right and your left, you'll see deposit boxes. You just slip those into the deposit box. Come on, get your seat ready online. Those of you that are watching us online, whatever day of the week that you watch this, whenever you watch this, we want this to be a blessing to you. Why don't you sow into this word on today so that we can continue to do what we do, and that is move the cross. Come on, get your seat ready. Again, if you want to text it, you just text the words NLCSE to 91694. 91694. Come on, stand to your feet. I tried to be as patient as I could for those of you that have Androids. <coughs> I tried to FaceTime one of my friends it wouldn't even go through because they have androids. Don't you want to be a part of FaceTime? 
Somebody said, no. That's exactly why I don't have it. I got to FaceTime you on WhatsApp. Ain't that a mess? Oh, stop. Stop. Get in this wheel. Come on, stand to your feet. <laughs> I love messing with y'all. Come on, lift your seat up to the Lord and repeat after me. I'm a tithing and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you living it? For the rest of my life. Consider yourself this.